Hi folks, today I'm reviewing the Auratone 5C Super Sound Cubes, which I recently purchased as a second set of monitors. I'd heard and read many good things about them, so when Auratone started manufacturing them again, I took the opportunity to purchase. And when I first heard them, what I heard back was not quite what I was expecting. The Auratone 5C Super Sound Cube started its journey in the humble surroundings of company founder Jack Wilson's garage more than 50 years ago in Chula Vista, California. The limited range speakers started appearing in studios during the 1960s and were quickly adopted as a reliable representation of worst case scenario lo-fi systems capable of showing the engineer how his mix might sound out in the real world. Whilst their appearance has changed over the years, their core design and sonic characteristics have remained largely unchanged, and over the years received high praise from many a top engineer and producer. You'll find at least one in just about every major studio across the world, because as I will explain, they have a very specific set of characteristics which are central to their usefulness. Fast forward to now, the Auratone legacy lives on, with the company relocating to Nashville, Tennessee, whilst still run and owned by the same family that produced the original. Up until fairly recently, the only way you could buy an Auratone was on the second-hand market, but now, the 5C Cube is making a comeback, since the company began again to faithfully reproduce them. By all accounts, the newer versions every bit as authentic as the original design from an acoustic standpoint. Shipping was quite fast and I received my brand new Auratones about two weeks after placing the order for them. The two cubes arrived tightly packaged, facing each other, in a box that will come in handy in the future when I decide to take my Auratones to the studio that I'm working in, as their size makes them easily portable. Each 5C cube features a single paper cone driver in an enclosed cabinet. The single cone contributes to the absence of any comb filtering issues that are inherent in other two or three way monitor designs that employ crossover filters for each speaker. Being an unported design, the Auratone, like the Yamaha NS10s, features a waterfall plot steeper than the Niagara Falls, resulting in a sound that is extremely uncolored and free of nasty resonances that smear our perception of tone or time based effects. The 5C is not 100% flat as you can see, but they do have a useful tonal sweet spot that once strayed from, the Oratones will inform you that you are mixing either too dark or too bright. In my opinion, no Oratone clone has successfully replicated all of the aforementioned valuable characteristics that the Oratone became known for. Some designs try to improve on the original 5C by extending the frequency range, but I feel that this defeats the purpose, as their real strength is their mid-range focus. Cheaper clones can also produce resonances that smear the sound, so whilst they might sound better than the original from a spectral standpoint, they're not really telling you the whole truth and nothing but. You'll need two sets of banana plug cables running from a moderately powered amplifier. I researched well-known amp and 5C combos and noted that a lot of people felt that the discontinued Crown D75 amp was a good match for these little speakers and so snapped one up on eBay that was still in good working order. For those interested, the Crown D75, if you can get your hands on one, also features transformer taps that allow it to run on multiple worldwide voltages and frequencies such as the 240 volt 50 hertz supply that we have here in Australia. Always seek the advice of a professional electrician before engaging in any sort of modifications to audio equipment. You'll also need cables connecting the output of your interface to the input of your chosen amplifier. Be sure to power the amp last when starting up your system and power it off first when shutting down equipment to avoid any loud pops or clicks that could potentially damage the speakers. My motivation to purchase was that I wanted speakers that would complement my current monitor set. With my Yamaha HS50Ms and HS10W sub, I was compensating for what I perceived as a brittle top end and barking mid-range by either adding too much bass, carving out important mids, or not adding enough top end to my mixes. These are the pitfalls of working with monitors that are hyped. 
in that whilst they are great for hearing upper detail and lower bass frequencies, they can lull us into a false sense of balance. Ideally, it's good to have both full range monitors and something less flattering that relies on a single driver such as the 5Cs, as each monitor combination do a good job of nailing different parts of the spectrum. So for me, the Oritones really filled a void in my current monitoring setup. Now to the important part, how do they sound? The sound of the reissued Oritone 5C is not what I expected. Having not used the original Oritones before, I was prepared to hear some fairly scratchy sounding speakers with little to no bass and a dull top end, much like an old kitchen radio. With nicknames like horror tones or awful tones, it's easy to understand why I drew this conclusion, but I was really surprised when I heard them for the first time. What I heard was more than enough bass and treble, with clarity in the mid-range I'd not experienced before, including in the upper bass frequencies. When I say clarity, I don't mean in the sense you might think, like perhaps adding loads of top-end EQ to a dull mix. Rather, the sense of clarity is a result of the fast transient response of these paper cones to changing frequencies, which allowed me to hear more of what was happening in between the notes being played. The detail they provide in the mid-range is shocking and a real eye-opener. You can really hear elements in the mix as they are. Nothing more, nothing less, no hype or colour to cloud your listening experience. The 5Cs have a great mid-range focus with a tight, punchy, dynamic, uncoloured sound that is very revealing and accurate. The stereo imaging is also possibly the best I've heard on any professional monitor of its price range. Listening to Michael Jackson's Thriller album is an experience in and of itself, but on the Oritones you miss no panning decision or effect, to the point where I find myself being able to easily pick out types of effects as separate entities from the instruments themselves. It's like hearing the album for the first time, as you start to hear all these little nuances that other speakers just clouded over with colourful hype. I'd compare it closely to the experience of hearing an acoustically treated room for the first time after spending years working in one that was not treated, in a similar way that the sound becomes dry and more detailed. What are they like to mix through? I'd recommend listening to quite a few different genres of music as well as your own mixes as you break them in. The bass and treble are attenuated smoothly at the top and bottom ends of the spectrum, so they take a little getting used to, but if you take the time to really absorb the sound, you can quickly learn to listen through them and hear past their spectral shortcomings to extract the most out of the way they expose the mid-range. The mid-range is by far the most important part of any mix, as it's an essential component for mix translation to other sound systems. Not all sound systems, be they large or small, consumer or professional, expensive or cheap, have shimmering highs and thumping lows, but they all do have mid-range in common, which is why it's so critical to get that right. What the Oritones also excel at is setting instrument levels. There's only so much space to go around in a mix, and they'll let you know when it's getting crowded or whether the important elements, such as bass, kick, snare, lead vocals, are either too loud or too soft, or being masked. Whilst they can't monitor much below 100 hertz, they do start to break up and distort if your mix is carrying too much low end relative to the mids and highs, and so serve as a good means of determining how much sub bass you can get away with, which you can later fine tune on your full range speakers. The Oritones don't produce a huge amount of volume, but they do tend to produce more detail in the mid range when listening to these lower levels than when being driven harder which means that you can mix with them for hours without fatiguing your ears or losing detail. Best uses, low level critical listening, working long hours, low ear fatigue, exposing mid-range clutter, determining instrument levels, crafting time-based effects, carving out mid-range detail, translating mixes to other speakers, and determining how much sub or low bass you can get away with. As long as you understand that you're not buying monitors that would give you loads of sub bass or a pristine top end, there shouldn't really be any unwanted surprises. You will need to factor in the cost of an amplifier to run them, as they are a passive design, but anything rated at or above 70 watts will be able to handle them easily. 
I would have liked to have had the option to use an XLR or TRS connection to bring them up to the modern day, however the banana plugs are easy to find at most electrical retailers. The stick-on pads that adhere to the bottom do seem a cheap solution to the consideration of mechanical isolation, but these little guys are not pumping out the type of bass that will send huge vibrations through your desk or meter bridge, so the actual need for mechanical isolation is relatively low and they do seem to work rather well. So, in conclusion, if you're looking for a second set of monitors that complement your full range system, or for that matter searching for your first pair of affordable but accurate monitors, then it's worth checking out the new Oritone 5C Mix Cubes. Their proven track record speaks for itself and it's great to see the Oritone brand back for the new generation of producers and engineers to enjoy. If you find yourself wanting mixes that translate better, or you'd like to critically analyse and pull apart pro mixes with ease, then I'd highly recommend Oritones as an invaluable tool for anyone serious about music production. Until next time, happy mixing.